perfect. Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been a while and I'm just so excited to share with you that finally I got some new wheels that I'll be putting on the car. And this is just something that I've been just looking forward to since the day I bought the car in 2016. And I know it's 2023, but when I bought the car, I said two things. Like, I want to change the trim from wood, which I finally did last year. So that was six years later. And I wanted to get new wheels for the car. And it's finally happened, we're here. And you know how we got here? It's kind of a long story, but I'm gonna quickly try to go through it. So when I drive my alignment, I thought it felt it was steering towards the left. So I went to a shop, got an alignment, and after the alignment, you know, I found that I was still steering towards the left. So I called the shop um, nicely and I didn't accuse them like, hey, you didn't do anything or change, fix my alignment, my suspension. So I just asked them suggestions like what may have caused this. And then they asked me how many miles was on the car. And they said, you know, it could have be that your suspension is tired and old that needs replacing that's causing uneven wear on the tires. And I could check by swapping my left and right tire and see if it made a difference. And, you know, I actually took that suggestion and then I swapped front two tires. And, you know, I found out that once I do that, it started to turn to the right. So, you know, they were right. I think that I have my old suspension or something like that caused uneven wear to finally like wear the tires out uh, unevenly. So, did I get new suspension? No, I didn't. That's where the kind of the dilemma is uh, with me when I bought these new wheels, because regardless of what I buy, I'm gonna need two new tires. And do I wanna do suspension right now? Which probably make the handling better, but I'm still kind of undecided on if I just want to do a shock package or coilovers, which could range from $1,000 to $2,000. And then even after that, that's not going to really change the way my car looks or anything like that, which honestly, that's why I bought this car because it looks good and I want to make it look good and just have fun changing it up. Or should I get new wheels because I'm going to get new tires? Because if I just got new tires, probably wouldn't change the wheels for a very long time because it would seem like a waste getting new tires and then changing new wheels. You, you kind of know what I'm saying there. But yeah, that's how I finally, you know, just came to the decision. You know, I wanted to get new wheels. It's something I've been looking forward to since the day I bought the car. So that's kind of what I went with, even though they may unevenly wear over time, but I think that I won't notice for a long time because the miles I put on this car are kind of low and hopefully by the time, maybe in a year or so, I will do the suspension. Um, it's just, that one's just gonna cost a lot with parts, not only the suspension, but the refreshing some parts and the tools that I need that I don't have. So yeah, that's kind of a long story, but I'm just super excited to finally get something new. So the boxes for the new wheels are right here. And I'm just excited to share this moment with you and reveal what I got. So let's check it out. Yep, so there it is. These, you can tell it's a little flatter, which will be my fronts. This one has a lot more concave, which looks really nice, which will be my rears. 
and I'm just so excited to finally get something new to put on here. And I know, you know, so why did I choose this model, this color, and this size? And I guess I didn't even tell you about the size. I chose to go to 17 inch wheels just because, you know, if you watched my dislikes video, I just wanted to experiment with going down a size so I can get more sidewall and just to increase the comfort of the car. Because to me, um, yeah, it's a sports car, but long term, my long term goal with this car is kind of just to turn it into a fun road trip car, which I want to be just as comfortable as I can. And why I chose black, you know, which is honestly, I think is an overplayed color nowadays since, you know, factory Toyotas, Chevys have that. So because I think that you know, going down a size to 17 is not really that sexy. So just to try to cover that up or just hide it, you know, is, you know, I just chose black. And honestly, I think 19s look really good in the car, which one day I will get to. Just, you know, when, I don't know when that day will come, but if I do get 19s, I feel that, and I think most people think that you're, fitment with ride height it definitely has to be more on point um if you have like a bright colored wheel like you know silver 19s they're gonna notice the gap even more compared to if i have black wheels it all just hides because you know the tires black uh the wheel well shadow it's all black so it kind of just stays hidden um, so that's kind of why I went with black 17s and why I chose these apex wheels is you know, I honestly there aren't many good looking wheels at The 17 inch size. I mean stock they look fine because no one really complains stock is stock But I didn't want to go for that kind of look so I kind of wanted to get something new something fresh and yeah, so going over these specs, these are eight and a half, 17 inch, 40 offset. Uh, the rears are nine and a half, 35 offset, and they're all each about 17 pounds, which is a weight savings of about eight pounds per corner. So that's about almost, it's about 30 pounds total of weight savings, which is pretty nice. Um, not real game changing, but you know, it's nice. And with these specs and the offset compared to factory, uh, in the rear, I will gain like a millimeter clearance on the inside, but it will poke out 13 millimeters more. And for the rear, I'm just gonna gain two millimeters more clearance on the inside but on the outside, it's gonna poke out 28 millimeters more. So that's gonna make a huge improvement on you know, the stance of my car. So there's one thing that I kinda messed up on that I didn't realize until I changed tires on my wife's Corolla. Um, it was worn out, it was changed from Toyo to Michelin. Same size, same specs. But I didn't realize that how much of a difference the tire compounds made because switching from Toyo to the Michelin ones, it felt less sharp, but it gained like more ride comfort. And, you know, I didn't really realize that kind of drasticness for my BMW because when I changed tires a long time ago, I came from run flats to this, which, you know, I thought, um, which hand cooked tires, which I obviously thought, you yeah, know, of course it's going to ride a lot better, but I didn't realize, you know, the same, even at the same size and, but just different compounds, you can feel a lot different. So stayed at 18 and chose a different compound. I could have felt a lot comfort difference. So just continue where I messed up. I just chose to 
go 17s because I thought, you know, that's the only way to get more comfort at the moment. Uh, that I realized when I was shopping for these tires, which I got Yokohama's, they were the only performance tire that weren't like autocross or track tires that I could buy. So there's only one choice compared to if I had chosen 18s, there's a lot more choices to switch between so I could choose, you know, different comfort levels on the different compounds compared to, like I was saying, there's only one choice here um, at this size, at the spec that I wanted, um, which is 23540, which is actually the same as these. So I didn't even gain any sidewall in the front just cause I went with the apex fitment recommendations, you know, cause obviously if I sized up, it's gonna be, it might hit, you know, you can't, because it's not as deep as in the middle of the wheel well as, you know, the side. But I guess the only place that I actually did gain um, some sidewall is in the rear, cause I went with, it's still 255, but I went 40 so just gain a little and hopefully i do feel a little bit different because i already bought the tires and i don't think i'm going to be changing them for a while so there's that so i don't want to forget to mention that i also got new tpms sensors in black to match and some new lug bolts and locks to replace my old worn down rusty ones can't forget the details unlike some other cars out there with the chrome lug nuts on black wheels. And also, I got some colored center caps. They came with black, but I wanted to have some fun, so I got two red and two blue, because I couldn't really decide which I wanted to go with. So, you can all help me decide that later. After getting the wheels and tires mounted, I had to drive home with the biggest spoiler in the world since I forgot to bring the string to tie the trunk down. So it just popped open and stayed open. It was pretty embarrassing, but pretty funny at the same time. But luckily, the shop was super close to my house. Another thing I wanted to do before I started driving around everywhere was to clean the tires up so I can get real ricer with it. So I took off the wheels and bought these Sharpie paint pens which I'm gonna fill in the tire lettering. On the driver's side, I'm just gonna do the small Yokohama print, and on the passenger side, I'll fill in both edges of the tire. One side's gonna be a little bit more subtle, and the other will be bold. You can help me also decide that later, which one you like. I know it may seem corny to most, but I'm just trying to have some fun with the car right now, before I get too old or something like that, or grow out of it, you know? Who doesn't like some race car influence? Plus, it's probably going to chip off anyways over time. But man, after doing this, it was quite annoying. Filling in the letters is harder than I thought because those grooves make it look uneven since the paint stays in the divots and gets scraped off the raised sections. After giving it a couple more touch-ups, I dressed the tire and I'm finally done. What do you think? Do you like the ones with the Advan or just the Yokohama? They both turned out better than I thought they would. It pops, but not too much like how some of the tire stickers could be. So these mud flaps that I ordered, these generic um, universal rally armor mud flaps just came in just in time just so you know because the wheels are going to be poking out much more i definitely need to protect you know my body work uh, and the paint since the body kind of slopes inwards so the tire kind of sprays onto the paint and i just want to protect that definitely since it's going to be the tires going to be coming out a lot more so definitely have to protect the paint um, I think it's easier to see once I come out a little bit farther, how it just curves into the body. 
and similarly at the back here. I'm gonna get the spray all upwards on the paint. So I'm trying to prevent that from happening. And you know, BMW used to make some mud flaps for the Z4, but not anymore. And I kind of didn't like those anyway, since, um, I mean, I'm sure the mounting would have been great, but it also rests here, which kind of ruins this wheel arch line because it goes this like this and then just like bumps out. So I wouldn't really like the look of that. And uh, depending on how it's mounted here, it could like, you know, be abrasive towards the paint. So that would have been good. So I need to switch these stock wheels to the new ones and just test to see how to mount it. In the front, it may be hard to see. It should be easier. I'm gonna obviously put some tape on the metal part since it's flat. Uh, and it's luckily the wheel well is flat all the way in. But in the back, it's a little tougher since you know, I still, we still have the metal lip, but then the wheel arch kind of, it's not flat, it, it dips inwards and around. So I'm not sure how to even mount the mud flap in there. So, but I need to wash it and see how it will look. Now that I've got the tire back on, I just have to use my best judgment here to line this up to where the tire is. I know I can go higher since it still does poke out up top, but if I don't hang the mud flap low enough, I'd still get the sling down low. I'm not sure if you can see it that well on camera, but here's a sample of that dirt coming up before the mud flaps. Mounting the front. It's not too bad since the wheel liner is pretty flush with the metal part. I actually think it turned out pretty decent. But when we get to the back, it gets really annoying. The initial taping to the metal was okay and fine, but figuring out a way to curve it into the wheel well was kind of frustrating. I chose to cut some of the flap off, hoping it would reduce the resistance that it would want to bend back flat. Then. I just bent it around and taped it down, hoping it would stay, and I guess it kind of worked. All right, so I finally finished putting the mud flaps on all four tires and my initial impressions are it's kind of okay um, the front one here it kind of seems like it sticks out a bit much but I kind of designed that in there because you know when we turn and stuff the wheel is gonna come out a little bit more so I just wanted that extra protection and going to the back here notice how there's no kink up top and it's kind of like kink that comes out and it's just kind of just seamless and straight see now seeing this I kind of wish that you know I did that for all sides like all four but I think I would have lacked you know the length all the way down to protect from the bottom splashing up so I don't know if I would have had enough there yeah, it's kind of inconsistent because I didn't really account for, you know, the bending of the back one. Um, and it's a little easier to um, measure this one out because, you know, the back tire doesn't really move compared to the front. 
So it just seems like this section here is unprotected. And oh, well, it's a tiny bit. Everything else seems to be okay. And moving on to the right side. You can see that it's inconsistent because this side has a tiny kink here. So I didn't really do a good job at, you know, keeping them all uniform and stuff. And here's the front one. Again, I think this one sticks, goes in a little bit more compared to the other side. But you know, it's kind of it's kind of okay if you don't stare at these too long or just stare too hard. I think from the back of the car, it looks okay. Um, I just really hope that you know what I did was necessary and just protects the paint of my car until maybe one day I can get that you know clear PPF on there. But. Yeah, let me know what you all think of this so far. From the side profile, like I mentioned before, don't really notice it. And even from the front, it looks pretty seamless, so not too bad. It's just the back that we could get a little judgmental on, so yeah, I think it's finally time to go for a test drive. All right, so testing after the rain, you can easily see where the mud flaps worked and didn't work. I have to say that it was kind of successful, but days later after some driving, the flaps weren't holding onto the tape on the inside of the wheel well. So they came loose and for the back ones, they bent back to straight. So I decided to take them off so I wouldn't have the risk of them rubbing on the tires and wearing them out. Before I show the car off, let me put on some finishing touches. Although the wheels without the center caps look pretty cool in motorsport, I'd rather have the center protected. So let's pop these on. Other finishing touches to help me tie this all together is a new set of black grills and putting back on my stubby antenna. So say bye to Buzz. So giving you my driving impressions, I'm glad to say that the car is tracking straighter than before at center. But comfort wise, unfortunately, I didn't achieve my goal of making it softer. It feels the same as before, but at least the precision in my steering is still there. Anyways, how did you think it turned out? I honestly think that at least in person, it turned out better than I thought it would. Just the way the new wheels are further out and fill in the fenders give my car such a better presence and stance that it just blew me away. And I'm still undecided about the color and lettering, so let me know down in the comment section what you prefer. I'm just going to keep it that reverse Carrera GT look for now since blue is my favorite color and it matches with the BMW logos anyway. But red will always look good on most cars since it at least is going to match with the taillights. 
And most people are just going to see one side of the car at a time anyways. So, not a big deal. Well, thanks for coming along with me on this journey. I have a lot more to do to complete this black and white look, so I'll see you next time.